Hi there, the name's Nico, and today I'll be going over my tier list for the best and worst characters in Solo's Eternal Return. Season 5 has been out for a few weeks now, and I felt like it was time to go over the current meta, so let's get started. I'll be showing stats on screen, so here are the average stats that I base off. If a number is red, it means they belong in the bottom 20%, while if a number is in yellow, they belong in the top 20%. A cyan number means they have the best stats compared to all their characters, while a dark red number means they have the worst stats compared to all characters. First character I'll be going over is Dagger Jackie. Jackie herself is in a really good spot right now, but Dagger is not doing that well. This weapon type suffers from the fact that there are a few characters that are really strong with this weapon, and the game has to balance around them, causing characters like Jackie who have better weapon types to use those instead. This is why Dagger Jackie is going into B tier, which is the tier I designate as the tier where the characters are fine, but the weapon type is bad. The next weapon type for Jackie is Two-Handed Sword Jackie. Two-Handed Sword Jackie is not that popular right now because it is overshadowed by dual swords and axe. The most important change to note is that late game scaling weapons are not nearly as good right now because the XP system has changed this season. This causes characters to rarely hit level 20 unlike last season. So weapons that rely on you hitting level 20 are not that good. I mention this because Monohoshi Zao should be good with Jackie due to the healing factor but because of the scaling on it, it is not nearly as good. Jackie herself is really strong which is why 2 handed sword Jackie is going into A tier. Next weapon type is Dual Swords. Dual Swords Jackie is insane right now and is going into S tier. Healing Factor is incredibly strong right now, causing increased healing from skills as well as an AP increase. Dual Swords have the DPS, but the downsides was that they were squishy and could easily be killed. But with Healing Factor, this is no longer the case, it is incredibly hard to kill Jackie. The last weapon type is Axe. Axe is very similar to Dual Swords right now. With Axe skill, you can heal for a lot combined with Healing Factor. Axe is known to have high AP values compared to other weapon types. So although it doesn't have as much DPS as Dual Swords, they still hit like a truck, which is why Axe Jackie is joining Dual Sword Jackie in S tier. Next is Pistol Aya. Pistol Aya is still known as an early game killer and can snowball a lobby given the right circumstances. Pistol Aya is currently playing Spellamp as her main build, but if you want to play a Spellamp Pistol user, you should just play Jenny. Pistol Aya is going in A tier. Air Aya is next. Air Aya is not as strong as she previously was, but is still a menace. Soul Rifles have received a small nerf since the last tier list. People are currently testing Chang Pao on Air Aya due to the increase in attack speed, but there are not many results so far. Air Aya can snowball and become difficult to deal with if not dealt with early. She generally is weaker in the early game because her build is slower than a lot of other builds out there. Air Aya is going in A tier. The last weapon type for Aya is Sniper. Sniper Aya is still an early griefer. Sniper rifles got nerfed in terms of their AP a couple patches ago. Sniper Aya generally pokes with red spray, but if you can get the jump on her, she's generally dead. If you want to play Amp Aya, I would recommend Pistol Aya over Sniper, which is why Sniper Aya is going into B plus tier. Next is Glove Hyun Woo. Glove Hyun Woo was a pain to deal with for the longest time due to Mark of the Phoenix, but I'm happy to announce Smolder is no more. Well, no more in the sense that it no longer does max HP damage, but gives basic attack scaling, which is not nearly as toxic as it once was. Hyun Woo did get a minor rework in terms of how his passive and W work, but this hasn't really helped him perform well. Even with healing factor, Hyunwoo is the worst glove character right now in my opinion, which is why he's going to be placed in B tier. Tafa Hyunwoo is next. Tafa Hyunwoo still plays as a full spell lamp, one shot play style. Tafa Hyunwoo is really one shot or die, and he generally loses more than wins. Tafa also got changed to have no basic attack scaling, which forces Hyunwoo to stick to this one shot play style. He also lost a lot of defense on his weapons, but was compensated with defense scaling, but because scaling was nerfed due to the XP changes, Hyunwoo still struggles. He is going in B plus tier. He is better than Glove Hyunwoo, but they both aren't doing well. The next character is Bat Magnus. Since the last tier list, a new bat was added called Pakua Chang. This bat is incredibly broken. Even though it is a scaling weapon, which is not nearly as good right now, it has a passive hex on it. This hex is actually stronger than the accessory grimoire. So thinking about Pakua Chang and another accessory compared to a different bat with grimoire, the stat spread is better with Pakua Chang and also scales. You really transition off this bat as well. Bat scaling up scaling was actually buffed since the last tier list, plus one of the most important changes that has happened since the last tier list is that many characters ultimates are on a shorter cooldown and Magnus is no exception. Bat Magnus is in a really good spot right now which is why he was going in A plus tier. The last weapon type for Magnus is Hammer. Magnus might be strong right now but Hammer Magnus struggles. Hammer got a new scaling on it, item efficiency which is basically bonus crafting mastery. But all of the hammers got nerfed and one of his most used hammers Bang Mace got nerfed more so than other hammers. Currently, Pakua Chang is so broken that there are no reason to run Hammer Magnus, which is why he is going in B tier. Now we have Fiora. 
Last year, as I said, I would not comment on Fiora since she just received her major rework, but she has had it for a few months now and I feel safe to comment on it. Basically, it turns out that playing Spelling Up is not nearly as effective as playing Crit, even post rework, which is ironic to me. But first, I'll talk about Rapier Fiora. Rapier Fiora is the worst weapon of the Fioras. This is because Rapier Fiora has suffered from the sins of Adela. Rapier no longer has attack speed scaling, which is really important for Rapier Fiora and was one of the reasons why you would run Rapier. All the rapiers were changed and now S Spirit is the best rapier which gives bonus attack range. Rapier Fiora used to run Ironclad but they nerfed Ironclad because of Fiora. Red has also been nerfed since it's been out. This is our main augment, it just isn't as strong. Rapier Fiora is an A tier. Spear Fiora is next. Spear Fiora was the best Fiora when Smolder was around in its prior form because Blazing Lance's Smolder was the strongest out of all the Smolder options, but this is no longer the case. Spear was given but then immediately lost its attack range scaling. Spears have been nerfed across the board specifically related to their AP. Fiora is still a solid character and Spear Fiora is an A tier with Rapier Fiora but is better than Rapier. The last weapon type for Fiora is Two Handed Sword. Two Handed Sword Fiora is an A plus tier. Two Handed Sword Fiora is running Manahushi Zhao which although is worse than it was before due to the XP changes works well with Fiora for the lifesteal. Two Handed Sword Fiora runs Vampiric Bloodline as her main augment because she gets extra healing with her auto attacks. Next is Bo Nadine. Now Nadine is not in a good spot right now. This has to do with the pace of the game. The game is shorter than before, which has caused Nadine to not get as many stacks as before, plus they nerfed the amount of stacks she gets from animals. Although animals spawns a lot sooner, the game being shorter has hurt Nadine a lot. Maybe it's just me, but I'm happy with Nadine not being meta for one season. All the epic bows and higher lost 12 AP, but bows have a better spell lamp scaling, and Bo Nadine is going into B plus tier. The last weapon for Nadine is Crossbow. Now Crossbow Nadine is really hurting. This is due to the fact that it removes scaling up scaling from crossbows which Nadine relies on a lot. This has pretty much killed Crossbow and Nadine along with the changes to Nadine and the game's pace which is why she is in B tier. Next is Throw Sahir. Throw as a weapon type has not been that strong for the longest time but they can't buff throw because of Selene and Ava. Every throw character except for them are in a bad spot right now. If you want to play Sahir just play Shirk and Sahir. Sahir's ultimate is on a shorter cooldown, but this benefits both weapon types. Throw Sahir is in B tier. Shurik and Sahir is next. Sahir has actually fallen off a lot since the last tier list. Nothing significant has changed with Shuriken, so it could just be that people aren't playing Sahir right now, but he isn't doing that well as he used to. He was nerfed a bunch during the last tier list, so it's possible the nerfs have caught up to him, which is why he's going in the B plus tier. Now we have Heart. Heart has also fallen slightly since the last tier list. Heart generally relies on her scaling guitar teen spirit and wins the late game, but because scaling weapons aren't nearly as strong, it has hurt her slightly. Her guitars have also slightly been nerfed, but not nearly as much as other weapon types since the last tier list. Heart did receive some nerfs during hotfixes though since the last tier list, but Heart is going into A plus tier. Next is Air Isol. Now Isol is doing well, but he has received many changes. The biggest change with Isol was that the amount of traps you can make have been decreased. You used to get more claymores and double guillotines than you currently do. Plus Trap Mastery has been heavily nerfed so his traps aren't doing nearly as much damage. I checked AR Isol's stats more recently than when I made the stats graphics and it seems that he has been doing better. He is just not a popular character right now. With all of this in mind, AR Isol is being placed in B plus tier. Then we have Pistol Isol. Pistol amp scaling was actually buffed, but Isol himself was nerfed, specifically related to Pistol Isol. Isol's W received a massive nerf, which Pistol Isol uses to poke people. This has hurt him a lot, and combined with the trap changes I mentioned previously, Pistol Isol is in B tier. Now we have Glovely Dylan. Now Glovely Dylan is not nearly as popular as Nunchaku because the weapon scaling of Nunchaku is a lot better for Lee Dylan, as well as the weapon options available for Nunchaku, specifically Cerberus. Lee Dylan got a massive buff in terms of her ultimate being on a much shorter cooldown than it has ever been. Plus you aren't as punished for missing your ultimate compared to before. Glove Lee Dylan will be placed in A tier. The last weapon type for Lee Dylan is Nunchaku, and Nunchaku has received some much needed nerfs since the last tier list. Serpus received some nerfs and Nunchaku's scaling was nerfed, but I don't know if this will be enough to keep Nunchaku, Lee Dylan in check. Combining Lee Dylan with Amp Drone, she can nuke most characters that are below 40% HP, sometimes even higher than this with one button. Nunchaku, Lee Dylan is going in S tier. Now we have Two Handed Sword Yuki. Last tier list I said Yuki was not doing that well, but then tank CDR Yuki with Smolder started dominating lobbies. He was definitely top 5 last patch, but then Smolder was removed. This has definitely put Yuki more in line, but he still has been doing really well. 
Lavatine, the weapon with Smolder on it, was nerfed in a hotfix more recently because of how dominant two-handed sword Yuki is. High Priest Robe also lost 33% of his defense, which definitely hurts tank Yuki as well. Two-handed sword Yuki will be placed in A plus tier. For dual sword Yuki, he has been doing better than the last tier list. He has really good DPS and can melt many characters in one rotation. The problem with dual sword Yuki though is his survivability. Unlike dual sword Jackie who can keep herself alive with healing factor and her W, Yuki does not have that. If you really want to play a high DPS character with dual swords, I would play Jackie or even Camilo, which is why dual sword Yuki is going in A tier. Bohechen is next. Bohechen and Hedgen in general have been struggling a lot as of lately due to the fact of burst characters that can also lift through a combo. Example of this are Sua, Leon, and Lennox. Even with Bo Scale and Mastery being buffed, it just isn't enough for her like she used to be. She still can do well against a lot of the low tiers, but she struggles against top tiers, which is why she's going in A tier. Then we have Shark and Hedgen. As I mentioned before, for characters with a weapon type that isn't being played because they have a superior weapon type they can use, they are going in B tier. No one plays Shark and Hedgen, so her stats are not reflected on how Shark and Hedgen actually is. Nothing has changed with Shuriken since the last tier list that should make Shuriken Hedgen do so poorly. Now we have Spear Shukai. A couple patches ago, I would have definitely said Spear Shukai was SSS tier, but he has received a lot of nerfs since then. Originally, he was strong because they buffed the amount of materials in each zone, and this caused Shukai to pretty much get full stacks in dock as long as he brought a lot of water, some potatoes, and oil from another zone. So this late game scaling character could and still can get 150 stacks before night 2. This allows him to get his weapon mastery higher than he normally would. Plus with Amplification Drone being so strong right now in certain characters like Shukai and Lee Dai Lin, it makes them one-shot monsters. Spear Shukai is going in S tier as he is still strong, just not as strong as he was a few patches ago. Dagger Shukai is still not as good as Spear. Dagger skill is still one of the worst weapon skills in the game, and you could really only use Mount Slicer on Shukai, which has been nerfed more since the last tier list. Shukai is held back if he uses Dagger, which is why he's going in B tier. Next is Shirk and Cicela. Cicela received a lot of nerfs before the last tier list video, and these nerfs have finally caught up to her. She can no longer sustain herself as much as the top tier characters can and dies really easily. If you can find Cicela in the early game, she generally just explodes. Shuriken did not receive any changes since the last tier list, but Shirk and Cicela is not doing that well, which is why she's going in B plus tier. Then we have Throw Cicela. Throw has not been good on Cicela for a long time now. Throw weapon options just have not been as good as Shuriken. Even though they buff scaling up scaling on Throw, it just won't cut it and it will probably be a nerf because of Selene in a future patch, which is why Throw Cicela is in B tier. Now we have Kiara. Kiara is another character that has really benefited from healing factor. She currently can just raw all characters and kill them. With a change made to Chain Pao, which gives it more attack speed than Radar, this makes her hit you so many times while in ult farm and she can heal for so much that it is really hard to kill her. And her ultimate cooldown was reduced since the last tier list, allowing her to have her ultimate up a lot more frequently. Kiara is currently in S tier. Atriana is next. Atriana is no longer doing that well. Pretty much immediately after I published my last tier list video, Atriana got nerfed heavily and has not been able to recover. I've only seen one person do somewhat well with her, getting a couple kills a game, but generally dies in the mid game and rarely wins. Atriana is forced to stack AP if she wants to do damage, and generally this is at the cost of her survivability. With all this in mind, she is going in B tier. That's just Shoichi. Now Shoichi is not really played in NA, so it's hard for me to give a fair assessment of him. In KR, he is picked a lot because he is quite flashy and at low ping is strong. Shoichi's ultimate has a shorter cooldown now, but his weapons have been nerfed as well. Shoichi was playing crit for the longest time, but NN did not want that playstyle for him, so they basically reworked him so people would no longer play him as crit. He is going in B plus tier. Then we have Sylvia. Sylvia received nerf after nerf since the last tier list, and Sylvia is generally a character where people play her when she's broken, but if she isn't, she isn't really picked. She did receive a nerf to her human E in the most recent patch, and this has impacted her slightly. In the right hand, she can be quite strong, which is why she's in A plus tier. Now we have Emma. Emma has also fallen off since the last tier list. Emma got some heavy nerfs since the last tier list. She was pretty much nerfed immediately after my last tier list, and she hasn't really recovered from it. She can still nuke people, but just not to the same extent as she used to be able to. The opponents have a better chance to close the gap between Emma now. Emma is an 8 tier character. Lennox is next. Now Lennox has been receiving nerf after nerf since the last tier list, but all these nerfs were countered by the fact that she got her ultimate cooldown reduced by 30 seconds at max level, which is insane. 
Her main weapon, Glepnir, has been nerfed a bunch due to Laura, which has caused Lennox to move to Cathode Lash. It is not as strong as old Glepnir, but she still has made it work, which is why she is remaining in S tier. Next is Rosie. Now, Rosie has not really changed since the last tier list. The only thing I noticed was that her HP recovery from drinking chocolate has been nerfed, but that's it. She still does well against mid to low tiers, but struggles against high tiers unless she's really fed, which can be said about most characters, which is why she'll remain in A tier. Then we have Luke. Luke has been nerfed since the last tier list, but he's actually been doing a lot better in higher tiers because of killing factor. This has also increased his survivability. He still struggles to snowball like he does in lower elo, but he is now an A tier character. Now we have Kathy. I've said this from tier list to tier list, Kathy is just a character that will either suck or be broken, and now she's in broken tier. She just has great survivability and burst damage. She did receive a decent nerf in the most recent patch, but she is still going strong. This relates to Amtrum being really good on her. Her main dagger received a minor nerf, but this hasn't really done much. She probably will be nerfed next patch, but for now she is still S tier, definitely top 5 in my books. Adela is next. Adela got nerfed a bunch since the last tier list because KR picked up on how strong she was. She is now considered a ranged character for some aspects, but not everything. She still abuses Swift Stride, Slow, and Melee Heal Cut. She is a burst character and can burst most of the cast. Her power has shifted to her ultimate from her base kit because before she could kill people without forcing her ultimate, but now she generally needs ultimate to kill. Her ultimate is on a shorter cooldown than before as well. Adela is going into A plus tier, but definitely on the higher end of A plus tier. Then we have Bernice. Bernice has received some interesting changes since the last tier list. His attack range is now fixed. His ultimate cooldown has also been reduced. Sniper Rifle has got an attack range scaling, but Bernice's attack range is fixed, so this actually doesn't matter. So Bernice is remaining in B plus tier. Next is Barbara. Now, last tier list, I will admit, I definitely underestimated Barbara. The thing with Barbara is that she's not a popular character, so it's hard to tell how strong she is. Barbara's ultimate received a cooldown reduction. With Amp Drone, she can burst most characters with her ultimate. If she is in a bad spot, she can use RQ to escape many situations and just eat it away. She does struggle against top tier characters that survive her burst, which is why she'll be placed in A plus tier. Then we have Alex. Alex is a character where his stats look great, but I don't see anyone in top 100 doing that great with him. He is still a burst character, which is good in this meta. He is also an amp drone character and can also melt people with his combo, but again, similar to other burst characters, if the character survives his burst combo, Alex struggles because his spells are on a long cooldown. He is also going in A plus tier. Now we have Sua. In my opinion, Sua is the best character in the game this patch. She has great sustain between her shield and vampiric bloodline, and if she gets in a bad situation, she can just ER away. Most characters can't chase her. She also has a lot of damage if you end up getting caught by one Q. She is the first character placed in SSS tier. Leona's next. Leon will also be joining Sua in SSS tier. He received a minor nerf to his HP, but because of healing factor, he has great survivability and also bursts people with his W and glove skill. He is a glove character that did not rely on Mark of the Phoenix, the smaller glove, so the removal of smaller did not impact him. This change actually benefited him because the basic attack amplification lets him do even more damage without relying on a long fight. Next we have Eleven. Eleven is another burst character with great survivability. She did receive a small movement speed nerf, but that's it. She also uses healing factor. As Eleven is going in S tier. Then we have Ryo. Ryo did receive a nerf to her Q and attack range since the last tier list. Healing Drone has also been nerfed since the last tier list video, which has made Ryo not as strong. Ryo is still playing for the late game and hoping to win, but because of the XP nerf, she is not hitting level 20, making her weapon Ancient Bolt not as strong as it used to be. Ryo is moving down to A tier. Now we have William. William got hit with a nerf since the last tier list and is now not in a great place. The biggest change is that he can no longer animation cancel his ultimate with smokescreen, as well as the fact that his Q does not do nearly as much damage. All of the throw weapons were nerfed. William is going into B plus tier. Nikki is next. Nikki has moved back into playing Spell Amp. Nikki's ultimate is on a shorter cooldown than before. Her main chess piece, High Priest Robe, has been nerfed in terms of its defense, so she is squishier than before. The problem with Nikki is she needs permafrost in order to win the game, and if you don't have it by day 3, you pretty much lose. Nikki is going in low A tier. Next, we have Nathapon. Now, Nathapon managed to make it to number 1 in KR to only be replaced by Jackie, which you should know why by now. Nathapon was struggling a lot during Season 4, but became better once Red Sprite was introduced. Nathapon's ultimate was reduced, although he did not rely on his ultimate. 
The problem with Nidopon, and has always been a problem, is that he has no real escape tool. Sure, if he lands his E and ultimate on his opponent, it gives him time to escape, but this relies on hitting his skills unlike characters like Sua, who have an instant escape tool. Nathalpon will be moving up to B plus tier. Then we have Yawn. It seems like Yawn is not doing that well, but I don't know if it's because everyone has Leon Syndrome or what, because Yawn is the only character with a true combo in the sense that even at zero ping, you cannot escape his combo. There is no counterplay to one of his combos. Smolder has been removed, but the glove, Mark of the Phoenix, is still good and is the most used RNG glove on Yawn. He was buffed in the most recent patch, so we'll have to see how Yawn is, but for now, he is going in A tier. Now we have Ava. Ava has received many nerfs since the last tier list. These nerfs have made her not as popular, but she is still doing well. Spilling up on throw scaling has gone up, which benefits Ava. The basic attack range for throw has also gone down, but even out of all these changes, she is still an A plus tier character. Daniel's next. Now Daniel is a weird character in the sense that he struggles to get kills and win games, but he's a good character in terms of loving until the final circle, so a lot of people play him in KR. This has caused him to get nerfed a bunch. When I checked the top players recently, it seems like he has been doing better since when I checked last. Daniel is going in A tier, but he actually might be in A plus tier. Next we have Jenny. Jenny is in a really good spot right now. Her ultimate's cooldown was reduced and with Amtron, she's able to get more kills. This is a burst meta and this has benefited Jenny. Pistol amp scaling was also increased which helps Jenny. Devil's Marksman's got nerfed in terms of its damage but buffed in terms of how much it heals. Jenny is going in A plus tier. Next up is Camillo. For the longest time, Camillo did not really do well in solos, but he is now finally has a place because of healing factor. This has allowed him to live for a longer time because he often has his shield up multiple times in a fight, and since healing factor is on a 10 second cooldown, he can proc it multiple times in a fight, allowing him to survive for longer. Combined with the changes to Divine Dual Swords now having healing cut for basic attacks and not skills, and Chang Pao being changed to have a lot more attack speed, this has allowed Camillo to dominate. Camilo is joining Jenny in A plus tier. Then we have Chloe. Chloe has received a huge change this patch and that is the fact that Nina is a lot weaker in terms of her survivability and damage. Chloe has been hard to deal with for a while because Nina was so strong, but with this change, Chloe has not been doing nearly as well, which has caused Chloe to move down to A tier. Now we have Johan. He is better at running away than before and this game does reward you for placement, which is why he is moving up to C tier. Bianca is next. Bianca had a bug related to her W for the longest time. And then says it has been fixed, but I have heard some people say it hasn't. Bianca struggles a lot with the early game, but once she gets the moon, the meteorite arcana weapon, she is fine. Arcana weapon skill was changed for the better, but it's still a bad weapon skill. Bianca is going in 80 tier. Next up is Celine. Celine's release was a bit of a disaster, but she is a really good character. The only problem is that she is the hardest character to learn in my opinion, so not many people play her. There are a lot of combos you need to understand in order to play her optimally. Throw scaling up scaling is buff, which does help Celine. She is an A plus tier, but she might be better than I'm saying due to how difficult she is to play, and I haven't seen super strong results from her since the nerf she has received. Now for this newest character since my last tier list. The first character is Ekion. Now Ekion just came out during the last tier list, and I didn't want to comment on his strength, and I'm glad I didn't. He seemed fine at first, but it turned out he was incredibly strong. It ended up with people just building full tank with Black Mamba and killing people without taking any damage. This was mainly seen in team modes, but he was just as strong in solos. So he received a lot of nerfs. On top of the nerfs, the pace of the game is faster due to the changes in the amount of items in the zone, meaning that people are full build earlier than before. This hurts Ekion because he would normally contest first objectives being full build since he didn't have to worry about crafting a weapon. But now not only is everyone full build earlier, he doesn't reach level 9 until later in the game, meaning he is stuck on a blue weapon for longer. Ekion is going to be placed in D tier. Next up is Mai. Mai had an interesting release. Her kit does not allow much skill expression, fully counters auto attackers, and pretty much needed Phantom Jacket to win. Phantom Jacket was changed because Smolder was removed from the game. Phantom Jacket is now like a stronger version of Blazing Dress. Not many people run Blazing Dress right now except Daniel. A new whip was added since the last tier list, Oranos, and this has been Mai's primary whip transition. Mai is slightly below average in my opinion, which is why she is going in B plus tier. Then we have Aiden. Aiden was also another character that was only doing well because of Smolder. And with Smolder gone in its old form, he hasn't found himself this patch. People are still building him tank as if he could rely on Lavatine to carry them, but it just doesn't work like before. 
Eden is going in low B plus tier. Now we have Laura. Laura on launch did not seem that strong to me, but KR sees her as strong, which is why she's been receiving nerfs. Her main weapon, Glupnir, has been nerfed a lot as well. She currently is average in high ranks in terms of most of her stats, being a little high in kills. The best Laura seems to be getting kills, but can still struggle to win, even being full Exodia. Laura is going in B plus tier as well. I know Tia is L, but I don't have enough information to give you a good opinion on her strength. Currently, it seems like Tia might be in B the B plus tier, but this character is somewhat hard to learn because you have to remember her color combinations and her UI showing you what colors are available is not that great. It sometimes looks like she has a color that she doesn't have access to yet, so she may be better as people learn her. Okay, now I'm going to put them in order in their respective tiers, with the best of that tier being on the left and the worst of that tier being on the right. Please keep in mind though, if someone is on the right side of their tier, it does not mean they are bad. Unless you're talking about C tier characters, of course, it just means that they're characters that are slightly better than them, but they all still belong in the same tier. And yeah, this is the final tier list. I plan on doing this twice every season since these videos are taking me longer than they do since there are so many characters compared to when I started this series. So if you like these series of videos, please give this a like and subscribe for more Eternal Turn content. I hope to see you at the next video.